feel like Rush Limbaugh with this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am here <laughs> behind the EIB microphone. <laughs> Snurdly, what do you what do you make of this? You have a nervous condition. I rush on press. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Ray, or some of you might know me as Tiki with Ray, and today I am in Olala, Washington. Again. And again, at the Fuzzy Smudge. Yeah. And the Fuzzy Smudge is my good friend here, Mark, and Debbie, who is off camera. Hey, Debbie. Hey. <laughs> and um, this is your home Tiki bar. Yep. Now, when did you start building this? How long ago was that? We started... Well, actually, we started right after we bought this house, which was in 2010. We started the hard work, the detail work, the majority of it in 2012. Okay. And it took us, from when we started actually concentrating on this room, it took us two years to get it built. Two years. Almost every day. Now, you and Debbie are into Tiki, obviously. And when you bought this house... <clears throat> was that the original plan? The idea right from the bat, from, right from the bat, is like we are going to build a tiki bar. Well, or did it come about? No. Or was it like, hey, we're running out of space no, for all our mugs and no, Hawaiiana? That like, hey, maybe no. we should have a place to properly put all this stuff. No, actually, when we when we first looked at the house, um, she had plans for certain rooms. When I came down to the basement, as soon as I walked through the door into this room, yeah. I knew this was where the bar was going. I, we were looking for a house, among other things, that I could put a bar in. Oh, that was part of the... That was, that was part of the criteria. Pri pri yeah. Okay, yeah, all part right. Part of the criteria was was room for a bar and or room for trains. Well, I wasn't going to trains. find... Trains. Trains. Model trains. Like, oh, model trains. Yeah, like Sorry. choo-choos. Um, I wasn't going to find both without shelling out a wheelbarrow load of money, and I yeah. really didn't want to do that, so I had to pick, and this room was perfect size for a bar, and it's a lousy size for the train setup I wanted to do. So yeah. I gave up on the whole train idea. And she just give up on trains completely? I didn't even know you were into, into oh, yeah. Um, it's just like since I can't do the model trains, I'm not going to build a building specifically for that. No, but this is what you should do. Um, you can incorporate the tiki bar and the trains, and what you do is you have like the tracks, and then uh. as people as you have the drinks, you can like have them take them out to like the different seats there in your bar. I've been to bars and restaurants well, like oh, that. Oh yeah, I have too. But yeah, no. <laughs> That's just more work than I care to do. <laughs> We're eight years into this remodel, and we just finished the last big ticket item. Yeah. And, um, well, let, let's start from the very, very beginning. You have the room, right? Yep. What did you have to do first to the room to prep it? The ceiling in this room was two feet lower than it is now. Um, the previous two feet owner... lower? Lower. Uh, oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so the, but we didn't know that at the time. That, that, that discovery came, on, came along later. We knew going in that we were going to have to take all the sheetrock down out of every room in the basement. And this basement has... What, one, two, three, five rooms. And we had to take all of the sheetrock down. As the guy that owned the house before us had some kind of a dog business, and Labrador's pee at just about the two and a half foot level. That's great. So it, it, it soaks up. So all of the sheetrock came down. Um, it had. Um, oh, yeah, you're right when it comes to. I didn't even think about this, but like in your basement, this is just one of many rooms, actually. Yeah, this just happens to be the biggest room. Yeah. Um, we had to take the, the main floor. I, if I remember right, it was just concrete when we got here. But back behind these doors over here was uh, parquet, and we tore all that up. Oh, my God. Um, so was basically, it, was we emptied this room. We, we took this room down to, with the exception of the ceiling at the moment, uh, we took this room down to the concrete slab and the stud walls. We All the sheetrock came down. There were some shelves back wow. there, back behind the camera. They came out. Um, of course, this cabinet didn't exist, so... Oh, really? Yeah, that, that was... We had that built. But, uh, yeah, it, it basically, we, we, we took this room down to the stud level. We re, uh, Was this a finished room to begin with? Yeah, it, it was. was. Yeah, oh, okay, we, so this... Uh, yeah, it was sheetrocked. Uh, he didn't put anything on the floor. Nobody ever did. Wow. But it was sheetrocked and, you know, lighting and all that. Um, but we, we ripped everything out. The only thing that stayed... Other than the studs were the white lights we have in the ceiling that we turn on when we're cleaning. Wow. And they were they were kept there specifically so there would be white light to clean this place with under. No, when you were stripping everything down, 
Did you have an idea in your mind of what the tiki bar is going to be, or yeah. was it an organic process? Oh uh, well, yes, yes, okay. yes to both questions. We had a plan going in, and it changed like three or four times. I think what we <laughs> built was the fourth or fifth plan, and it got this this particular setup got built because the bar and the sidebar over there were given to me. I this was have, given to you. Yeah, I didn't have to build these two things. I was, I was fixing it. I was going to build a bar in a far corner over there. Uh, by the where the fireplace is now, but yeah. then a friend of mine, his brother was renovating a restaurant he just bought, yeah. and they gave me this bar and the sidebar as is. I I just had to add some lighting and a couple of shelves, yeah, and re, I had to redo the sidebar so I could get my vent re, my heater return back into the room. Wow! So was so was the, was the bar the first thing that was put into the bar? So you yeah. you have the empty room, then obviously you built everything back up the walls, the yeah. the floor. Yeah, we we had when we started, we we had it all. We got it all sheetrocked, or we started sheetrocking it. Yeah. Uh, very slowly. We didn't re again. That was two years into this before we really started doing much. But we got the bar in 2011, so not much was going on in here yet. But it got down here, and once we figured out where it was going to sit, then yeah. we had to build around the bar. Yeah, and this this is yeah, so the, an the L shaped was, bar, right? This is yeah, the other yeah, yeah, it's L shape, and then a long piece along the wall over there. Well, yeah, everything, the, the design completely changed with this one. This oh, my God, on. yeah. Well, I'm looking at your bar because it's like you have the door there. You have the fireplace there. You oh, we the, put the fireplace in. That, oh, did you really? Yeah, that went in after we, were, we talked about putting a fireplace in here anyway. Um, but then where it went got decided as soon as the bar showed up. Up to that point, we weren't sure even if. Yeah, as I'm looking at your place, this makes the absolute most sense yeah, of this, how you would have this set up. Yeah, originally it would have been a smaller bar in a corner, which would have worked just fine because the, the spare bedroom closet's behind where I was going to put it. Yeah. And I could have opened that up and put liquor shelves and whatnot there, and, but that didn't work out. There was also, there's also water over there, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would have been perfect, but it didn't happen. No, well, this this makes perfect sense no. because then you have, did you build this shelf or did you have this made for no, you? No, uh, that shelf and the tiki mug shelf over in the far corner we had made. Everything else in here we did. Wow. What about electrical? I mean, because you got a lot of lights going on in here. I yeah, one of the and not even like 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 a lot of times it's uh, you know people have like lanterns or lamps, mm -hmm. but you have a lot of lights that are in the the room. Yeah, the lighting that you see right now uh, was all yeah we put that all in, all of it. The white lights for um, cleaning they're they're the original lights they just got moved. Is this LED lighting, or are you actually using? No, the, these are um, these are all incandescent. Well, incandescent halogens. Uh, there's very there's only one or two LED bulbs in here now that are on right now. Wow. Most of the bulbs in here, the the LED bulbs that get used the most are the white ones. Just, I just haven't started converting to LED. The lights in the shelf here are LED. Yeah. But we just changed those out about six months ago. So did that uh, opening up the tiki board that like jacked up your your electric bill? Yeah. No, no. LEDs don't draw near as much, and this this isn't that much light. You can figure, uh, well, a hundred a hundred watt regular uh, incandescent bulb doesn't draw deadly. You need a lot of them. Okay. Uh, they don't even draw a amp per bulb, so you need a lot of them to be a real issue. Well, now, the nice thing now if you fire up a kiln, that's a whole other thing. No, that's just a watch your wheel do yeah, laps. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing that I really like about your bar is that you have all this lighting, and it's it's it isn't just like one color. No. Like it's it's multicolored, and yet your bar still has like a very dark, cavernous feel to it. Uh, we went through a lot of design process. There was the there was the let's make it a pure, basically black tiki bar. We both rebelled against that idea. Uh, one friend of ours said we should just make it a pirate bar because we do pirate. Well, we we almost got there. And, yeah, no, because then we got all this tiki, tiki and Hawaiian stuff laying around that we've been buying for the last twenty five years. That needs to go well, 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 let's back up. Say hypothetically you're okay. going to do a pirate bar. Mm -hmm. So what would that entail? Like what would you need? Like what things would you need? How would you do it differently than what you have? If now? I was going to do a pure pirate bar? Uh, yeah. It, well, it'd be brown for the most part. There wouldn't be much in the way of color. Um, a lot of ropes, a lot of pulleys, a lot of chains. So there'd be an anchor laying around here somewhere. Yeah. Cannons. Yeah. Everything, yeah, pretty much everything that you uh, associate with pirates. Would be in here. We all we own most of that sort of stuff, because the the bar we're building out on a patio is, is a pirate themed bar. And there's skeletons and cannons and chains and pulleys and skulls and dead guys and 
Yeah, there's some all, dead guys all, out all there. All that stuff out there. Yeah, there's two dead guys hanging, uh, hang, two dead pirates hanging in Gibbets out there. Oh, yeah, there they are, the yeah. dead guys. They used to go, they used to make the road trip with us to uh, Westport every year, and but they got, they're, they're heavy, they're awkward, and they wouldn't let me put a crane on the balcony of the apartment to hoist them up, so oh, I, I got know. tired of carrying them up the stairs and through the whole apartment. <laughs> well, de- dead guys would be like that, you know. Yeah. The thing I realize when it comes to, say, you're talking like, say, pirate and tiki is actually a lot of the things you just mentioned would be well at home in a tiki bar, too. Yeah, yeah, they 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 work together. They play really well together, but I didn't want to do a pure pirate bar. And so we wound up figuring out what we wanted, what I wanted is my bar, mm-hmm. and that's what we wound up building. I mean, I've got my girly glass collection that mm-hmm. spans from um, immediately pre World War II to to Betty uh, Page fifteen years ago. The Betty Page glasses came out fifteen twenty years ago. Yeah. Um, There's one thing I noticed I like about your bar is you were in the Navy. Oh, yeah. And you would definitely have... Well, this, yeah, that was part of why I didn't do the pirate. I do have a Navy wall in here. Yes, you do. Uh, it has... So I've, got my, I've got my Navy wall, um, the girly glasses. There's, you know, there's tiki all through here. They're all over the place. We've got a glass diver's helmet up on, the, up on top of the mug, my mermaid. Yeah. You it, have it, your, there's just a little bit of pirate. Around here is your certificates. Yeah, my uh, crossing the lines and canal and uh, plank owner. Or back or up on the other side of this wall here. Yeah. Um, there's pirate in here. There's tiki in here. There's navy in here. There's um, exotic album covers up on the wall. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. You don't have to buy the biggest, brightest, flashiest, newest anything. A lot of what you see in here came from Craigslist, Goodwill. Almost all of the bamboo matting and whatnot, like the striping up on, on the bar edges and whatnot, uh, came from Goodwill. Some of it came from um, Northwest Costume up in North Glen. North Glen? No. North Glen. Anyway, way up north. I um, think the reason why the easiest the easiest bar to do is a tiki bar is just because of exactly what you said. Because the, uh, the that Hawaiiana, that tropical, that tiki stuff was so big decades ago that mm-hmm. it is in the, in the Goodwill stores. Don't think you have to buy new. You know, you find something in a thrift store, Goodwill, junk shop that you think will work, it probably will. Yeah. No. Um, there's very, very, actually, there's very little in here that we bought new. The lamp in the corner, up at the ceiling, I made when I was recovering from heart surgery. Uh, the shark came out of a Goodwill shop in Vegas. The puffer fish came out of a Goodwill. In a perfect world, it's like the, the as I've heard, I've heard, it's like if you can have a theme or like a story. Then it, it, it's easier because it, that way you can have like, okay, well, now we know what to look for. But just like you were saying, a lot of times you you have what you find. Mm-hmm. And, or um, you find that you have already had stuff. When you do tear stuff <laughs> up, take out the sheetrock and whatnot, and you start moving services or you're installing new lighting or new, new electrical, especially, but plumbing also if you do that. Make sure you'll have to drill holes through the studs. That's just... And when you do that, make sure you get yourself a big box full of nail guard or, or uh, service guards. You just nail them into the edge of the stud by the sheetrock. Like there's some right up in here. Yeah. Just nail them up in there so when you go uh, put that sheetrock screw in, you're not screwing into wire or copper plumbing or whatever. Like you're not screwing anything because you're hitting a steel plate. How many electrical outlets? More than you think, right? If you think you need six, install 12. I am not kidding. Uh, we put in a bunch and I could have put in double. Wow. But I'm not opening the walls up again. No. I could find other ways. But, uh, yeah, I think we put in, holy Moses, 8, 12, 14, 16, 18. I think we put in about 20 outlets. Ten, Yeah, 20 outlets. And I could have done with easily 40. Because there's, there's stuff I want to install. I simply don't have the outlets. I have the power. I don't have the outlets. Well, I know, like, you have a refrigerator. Is that any special, like, say you want a nice, is there a special outlet that you need for, like, a bigger, full-on refrigerator? No, no a, standard, a standard household refrigerator is 110. Is it? Okay. Plug it in. But you got to think about it, like a refrigerator, ice machine. Um, well, now, you don't have a sink down here, right? No, the the plumbing is on the other end of this room, and I wasn't going to run new plumbing and drainage. No. Plus, the county gets involved. But if you're if you are going to do plumbing well and have a sink, well, that's a whole other can of worms too. Well, yeah, if you, yeah, you're going to put in put in water. You're going to have to put in hot and cold water. You got to drain it somewhere. And that was just that, that really was a can of worms I didn't want to open. Let's talk about the important thing when it comes to all this. I mean, every, you may have your tiki your home tiki bar dreams, but at the end of the day, it all really comes down to this: how much money can you afford? Yep. 
how much can well how much can you afford and how much will you afford are two very different yeah. things. I can't afford a lot. I decided I was going to afford so much. Yeah. So, yeah. But and then you're back to the you know, the um, the Goodwill hunts, the the thrift store hunts, the garage sales, Craigslist. Craigslist, yeah. Uh, the that's where I found most of the stuff that mm-hmm. I found is on Craigslist. Yeah. Not these chairs. I actually I bought the bamboo chairs that are on the floor here. I bought at uh, a thr- uh, an antique mall in Port Orchard. Yeah. But all of the furniture up in the sunroom, all that bamboo, all came out of uh, Craigslist. And as I said before, the main thing that I really love about home tiki bars is the personal aspect. It's your bar. It's your bar. You can do whatever the hell that's, you want. That's what I always. That's what I've always said since I got and started. If, doing and this. if my bar, and if my bar isn't tiki enough for you, well then well, there's the door. There's the door. One last um, thing. Speaking of personality, the fuzzy smudge. <laughs> what a name. Where did that come from? Dead squirrel. That's the story. That's it. Well, as a little more to it than that. But, um, <laughs> when we first bought this place, uh, this property has the house and there's a, a, a large workshop just a few feet from the house. Yeah, I went wandering into the shops which sold me the house. We wandered out into the shop, and here's this dead smear of grease and hair that clearly had been there long enough. There was no bone, no, it just grease and hair. Yeah. <clears throat> and we immediately started calling. We didn't know what it was. There was a lot of arguments over, was it a squirrel, was it a cat, was it a rat? Some One of my more smart-ass friends said, well, it was a wombat, and I pointed out to him, wombats don't live here. So that was very unlikely. Funny, I just, you know, it was a squirrel. It's my shop, it's my fuzzy smudge, it's a squirrel. Ta-da. And as we were getting ready to wrap this up and open it up, and with the floors going in and uh, all of that, we were casting, trying to find a name for this place. And you know, everybody wants some kind of a tiki name, and we did too. Just mm-hmm. nothing was working. Just, you know, everything just sounded even dumber than most of the ones we'd seen before. So, and then finally, we, we were sitting in a bar somewhere, and, and we were talking about the the smudge out in the out in the shop, shop and all that. And I finally had to start to use the shop. And we had always said, well, we're going to keep some of the smudge for some reason. Just you know, keep some of his hair. Yeah. Get a good picture of the smudge. Keep some of the hair, which we did. It's, it's really weird at my house. We found stuff in the wall or stuff on the floor that we don't know where it came from. Wow. That's what I know. It's a whole different, whole different story, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this house is haunted to a great degree. But that's a whole different story for another interview. The Haunted Tiki did, Bar, there's did, another interview we can do. Did you say, do you think your place is haunted? Hmm? You think it's haunted? I know it's haunted. But they, they're, they're not mean ghosts or any of that. They just show up, see what's going on, wander off, and go on about their business, whatever ghost business is. Ghost business? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they punch in, yeah. they punch out. No, nothing. They just... No, wait, have you, what have you experienced? Oh, I've seen a couple of guys that don't belong here. There aren't here. And no, nobody can run that fast. What do you mean, seen a couple of guys? Seen a couple of guys. That's exactly what I'm saying. She's seen the guy that she believes built this place. And Daryl di- died in 2012, the guy that built this house. And I know he's dead because I read his obituary and I've talked to his daughters. Because his daughters live around here. In fact, uh, Daryl, this was Daryl's house. And he's been here two or three times, I guess. I've never seen him, but he's been here two or three times. Uh, other people, Debbie's seen him, a friend of ours has. Where did, where did you see these people? Uh, the ones I see are just when I'm outside doing stuff. But they're standing there watching me, and they can't move any faster than I can. And when there's half an acre of yard, they're, they're not going to disappear in the time it takes you to turn around. Unless they just disappear. You're talking like outside? Oh, yeah. Daryl um, what what has been seen inside. What are they What are they wearing? Like what, Clothes. Just, they're just, they're just, they're just guys dressed like guys are supposed to dress. Like working working guys. How are you not losing your fucking mind? Because it doesn't bother me. They're not bothering me. They're not hurting me. They want to see what we're up to? Fine. I was tearing out Fern one day out in the back where I needed just needed to go away. And there was some guy standing there watching me, and I know he wasn't physical. Because he just kind of went, and he was gone. Nothing spooky you just, or anything. He was there, then he wasn't. Like, could you see through him? No. It looked just like a person. Yeah. And then they just... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I, so, yeah, dude, yeah, I am never saying. sleeping over here, just so you they know. They don't bother anybody. They do not. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Now you have that story. I'm going to be laying in the bed like... Fucking ghosts. 
Anyway, well, there was a segue, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> And back to the demolition, don't worry. Tear up whatever you need to tear Where up. were those guys during the demolition and when you need to do sanding and all that? Like, hey, you guys, get the work here. They probably can't hold anything. This place haunted? Hmm? Really? You've seen people. Like, literally people. Yeah. Like, how far away from you? Um. They don't, have they ever sent anything to you? No. So no. they're quiet. I think they're just here to watch, see, look, and look around, see what's going on. I think it'd be funny if there was like a, a ghost, but they were like, but they were all millennial. <laughs> they'd be standing there, but they'd be doing this. Oh, they'd be all confused. What is that? No, they're like checking their Facebook page. <laughs> hey, gang, this is Tiki with Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more episodes, click on the subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment in the, uh, the comment section below.